All righty. So welcome everyone. We're just going to take a minute while everyone virtually files in before we get started. Um, I have a quick introduction and then we'll get right to the book. My name is Gracie. I'm the events coordinator for print. Uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight virtually. A few little things before we get started. If you have any questions uh, during the presentation, there is a chat box on the bottom right of your screen and you can enter them right in there. Um, and there's also a question and answer function on the bottom bar of your screen if you'd prefer. Uh, I think for best viewing in the top right corner of your screen, there is a little button that says gallery view. If you switch it right over to speaker view, you'll be able to see all of the pictures, which is super important. So you can click that whenever you're ready. Uh, if you'd like a copy of the belonging tree, I'll include the link to a print page right in the chat box. You can click on through. Um, and now for our speakers. Uh, Marianne Kaka Leffler is the creator of many acclaimed books for young readers, including Let It Rain, Janine, What I Love About Christmas, and Vacation for Pooch. She lives in Maine with her family. Christine Lombardi is the creator of Lovey Bunny, Mr. Biddles, and the Grumpy Pets, which was an ILA children's choice selection. Christine lives and works in Montclair, New Jersey. So please join me with a virtual round of applause for Marianne and Christine. Hi, everyone. Oh gosh, we are so excited today because we are announcing our book, The Belonging Tree, and this is our birthday, our <laughs> book birthday. Um, so Christine and I are going to talk to you. Um, I am going to tell you about my idea and read the book, and then I'm going to send it to this fabulous illustrator for her to tell you about the illustrations. Um, before I begin, I, I do want to thank Print the Bookstore and Portland, Maine for hosting this event and making autographed copies of the book available. Um, a shout out, important one, to our editor, Christy Ottaviano, uh, who's been great through this process, as well as uh, everyone from Macmillan Books, who there's lots of behind the scene things happening to bring a book into the world. So that said, I wanna thank you for joining us. And I hope there's lots of young readers out there because I like to talk directly to you and, um, and read you this story. First off, I do want to um, tell you the idea behind the story. Um, when I go to schools, and I'm not sure I'll be there anytime soon, or visit bookstores, I have live events. I also have lots of kids. And one question that they ask me is, where do you get your ideas? Well, I have done many books and my ideas come from lots of places. Um, when I think back at my own childhood, that becomes a book. Um, my daughters have inspired books along the way. People I meet, my family, they're in books, even if they don't wanna be in books. Um, also things, events that happened in my life and sometimes things I read. But I wanna tell you specifically about the idea behind the belonging tree. So I guess we have to pretend the book does not exist because it all starts with an idea. And uh, this book was based on current events. Um, now we gotta go back a little bit. Um, in 2017 is when I got the spark for this book. And what was happening in 2017? Well, in 2017, there was lots of talk, news, um, about building a wall. And that wall was being built on the border of the United States and Mexico. There's lots of people on both sides um, arguing for the wall or against the wall. Uh, many people said, you know, we don't want people. Um, and many of the people trying to come into the United States were asylum seekers. And that means they were people that wanted to leave their country because they were threatened um, by war or felt unsafe in their own country. And um, 
so anyway, there was lots of talk. We don't want neighbors. Uh, stay there. We want only certain people belong in this country. Um, and then there was a whole group of people who wanted to welcome um, these people because our country is based on diversity. So that sort of sparked this idea um, for a children's book because I personally think, and I know most people do, especially kids, that it's pretty boring if everyone you meet is like you. Um, I think diversity is a good thing. And by not getting to know people, I think people prejudge and they make assumptions. But when you get to know someone, you find out that everyone has something to offer and everyone belongs. So back in the summer of 2017, I remember the moment I was sitting on a beach with my notebook that I carry and I was scratching down those first um, words of this, of this story. And um, I think you can guess that, hey, it's 2020, like what's taken so long? Well, it, it, uh, books don't happen like that. There's a process, I needed to sell it. Um, and of course, the, in this case, the illustrator needed to illustrate it. Then you have uh, printing and marketing and editing. Um, so here we are. Happy birthday. Um, <laughs> and it is a celebration because Christine and I actually have lipstick on. And we haven't worn, we haven't worn lipstick for six months. So without further ado, I'm going to read this book. And... Um, I told you the secret behind it, but I'm, I'm sure you're anxious to see the book. So this is the cover. You probably saw it on the zillion ads that uh, we have put out there in the social media world. But look at those illustrations. I have to tell you, um, I did write the book, and this is the very first time in my career of over 60 books that I did not illustrate my own book. So I actually been getting little frantic emails and Facebook messages saying, have you stopped illustrating? What's going on? But no, I did not stop illustrating. I actually have two books coming out next year. But at the question part after um, Christine talks, we can address that. But I just want to thank Christine for these beautiful illustrations. Okay, here we go. The belonging tree. And you're meeting this family for the first time. These are the wonderful end pages of fall, fall leaves. Now I always dedicate my books to someone special or someone that has made an impact in my life. To this one, you are out there, Vivian and Jill. To my former neighbors, forever friends, and talented critique buddies, Jill and Vivian. And they early on helped me shape this manuscript. Now, um, Christine's dedication says, to the lovely town of Montclair, New Jersey, whose unique free thinking culture makes everyone feel like they belong. And I have to say that Portland, Maine is just one of these very welcoming communities that I'm very happy to be part of. The Belonging Tree. Life was fine and dandy in the big oak tree on Forest Lane. Squirrels lived up, squirrels lived down. I feel like a teacher. <laughs> and in the middle lived the gray squirrel family. Pa, Ma, and little Zeke. Everyone played together, worked together, and ate together. The neighborhood was just the way it should be. You're going to get a better look at these illustrations in a bit. Coo, coo, caw! Until 
summer arrived. And so did a family of birds. There goes the neighborhood, said Pa. Those blue jays are bossy and noisy. And their shrieking songs are driving me crazy, said Ma. But I like their singing, said Zeke. Pa and Ma stuffed the walls with moss and oak leaves to block out the noise. Blue Jays don't belong here. And up goes the do not disturb sign. Pitter patter, chitter chatter. Soon autumn arrived and so did a family of chickmunks. There goes the neighborhood, said Pa. <laughs> chickmunks steal acorns. And they have lots of crying babies, said Ma. But I love babies, said little Zeke. Pa and Ma spent all day hoarding a winter's worth of acorns. They hid them high up in the attic. Chickmunks don't belong here. And now the sign says, stay out. And as you can see, the seasons are changing. Winter has arrived. The birds flew south and the chipmunks burrowed underground. The neighborhood was once again just the way it should be. And you'll have to see inside. There's Pa says, quiet. Mom says, safe. And Zeke says, boring. So it was just the way it should be until spring arrived. And so did blue jays and chickmunks and a family of split, crack, splash, beavers, yelled Zeke. Don't be so excited. Beavers are the worst neighbors of all said Pa. They gnaw and chew and destroy everything, said Ma, even oak trees. But they build amazing structures, said Zeke. Birds, chickmunks, now beavers, I don't think we belong here, said Pa. That night, Pa, Ma, and Zeke packed up everything they owned and moved to an old maple tree on the other side of the river. There they are, walking to their new home. The Gray family settled into their new home. Look, Zeke, there are lots of squirrels here, just like you, said Ma. Go up and play. Instead, Zeke looked across the river. He heard the blue jays singing, the baby chipmunks crying, and the beavers building. Zeke missed his friends. I'm not sure I'm doing a good job at these illustrations showing everything. Hopefully people can see it. That night, Zeke decided to go and visit the oak tree. Slowly, he made his way, carefully balancing on the branches as he, cro as he crossed the river below. Suddenly, the sky got dark. 
down came the rain. Down came the hill. Crash. Down came the old maple tree. Help! 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 Just then, two blue jays appeared. They lifted Zeke into the sky and carried him to safety. Downriver, the beavers quickly got to work building a dam, rescuing Pa and Ma. Back at the oak tree, the chipmunks met them with dry leaves and warm acorn soup. And as you can see, they're all gathered and it says, welcome home. Life is now fine and dandy in the big oak tree on Forest Lane. Blue jays live up Chipmunks and beavers live down, and in the middle lives the gray squirrel family, Pa, Ma, and little Zeke. Everyone plays together, works together, and eats together. And the neighborhood is just the way it should be. Because everyone is welcome. The end. I know you're all clapping and cheering and everything and we can't hear you, but that's okay. Um, I hope you liked our book. Um, and I hope you welcome people into your hearts, into your playground, into your community, into your families, um, into your tree, because Everyone belongs, so let's include everyone. I wish you a great school year, no matter what school looks like. I know it's a difficult time, but you can do this. Keep writing, making your own stories, and illustrating. And to inspire you to do your own illustration, isn't this a good leeway into, your, into you? Here you go, I want you to, to meet Christine Lombardi, who I am very proud has done the illustrations and brought my words to life. Christine, I'm getting teary <laughs> Here, It's your turn and um, I can't wait to see what you're gonna show everyone. Oh, but gosh. Thank well, um, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming. And um, I also wanna thank Print Bookstore and everybody on the team at Macmillan. Um, Christy, Jessica, Molly, Cynthia. Um, I hope I didn't leave anybody out just then. I, there's a lot of people involved. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna take you through a quick presentation, but it was really an honor to work on Marianne's book. Um, actually, I think either of us have never worked on someone else's book, so this was a first for us. And um, I had written and illustrated my own, so I felt an enormous responsibility to, uh, to make the author uh, happy with what I did as far as bringing her story to life. And, um, you know, it was a real challenge. I, I, um, I'll talk about some of that as I go, but um, I really enjoyed working on the book. And if you know me at all, um, I adore squirrels. So <laughs> almost fanatically, I love squirrels. I'm always watching them. So um, I'm going to do a quick screen share and I'll start. So here we go. Can everybody um, see this okay? Well, I, I, I can see it. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to start with, um, you know, I first got the manuscript for The Belonging Tree, which back then was called The Welcoming Oak. Uh, I forgot well, the title. Um, 
So I started immediately um, doing sketches for what they call the book dummy, which is a drawn out um, version of what the book will be eventually. And this is an example of some of the notes that we pass back and forth between Christy, my editor, and myself. And here's another spread from the book, which I think is page 10 and 11. It's the one with the um, cuckoo call <laughs> uh, handwritten up in the tree. So it's a lot of this process, back and forth. I submit sketches, leave room for the text, and then I get notes back, like move this, this needs to be bigger, and we're working with a book designer. Um, and so here's a little example of one of the pages of the book dummy. And these little lines uh, just to indicate uh, text. So it's just a lot quicker. Here's a scene that came later in the book of Pa with a wheelbarrow of uh, acorns, which clearly I needed to do some wheelbarrow studies because I, <laughs> <laughs> this is just horrible. But that's why you have sketches. You work all this out in the sketches. And these are the characters, Mom and Ma and Pa. And um, it was really fun to give these squirrels some life and some personality through body language. So. I, you know, they were always offended by everybody that came to the forest. So I had to show that in, in the illustrations. And a lot of that is in body language and the eyes. Studied a lot of squirrels. So um, here's a page from the sketchbook. Um, these are really, really uh, almost cartoonish. I definitely found a different style for the book. This one cracks me up on the left because he's just doing a little dance. And I, I just drew these uh, out of my head. And um, this thing on the right is to show proportions. I, you know, there's a lot of problems that you have to solve as you're working on a book. And um, eventually, once you finalize the characters and you know their, their um, proportion to each other, um, it's easier for the book to flow as you get into more complicated scenes. I still love this sketch. This is um, from the party at the end. And, uh, you know, all the animals are eating together. So this is a very loose sketch. That, but I, I, I stayed fairly close to this. Um, more body language. I think this one of Pa um, hoarding the acorns says a lot. <laughs> and then these are very loose also. I was trying to work out the different scenes of all the hustle and bustle of the uh, forest with these animals. And then these were character tests and these were very early on. And I was actually really into them, but something didn't feel right. So the more I played with style for this book, the more I realized this is a very classic picture book. And I didn't feel that these were, I don't know. I don't know if they're distracting. They're, they're probably okay for a different kind of book, but um, I felt like Marianne's book was so classic. And so in order to achieve that classic feel, I decided to go um, do the whole book in watercolors. So these were done in gouache and, um, you know, I moved on. <laughs> and then these are some of the back, I call them the background squirrels because they, you know, they don't have some of the characteristics and they don't have the, uh, the glasses or the flower in the hair. But these are, you know, also parts of, uh, you know, the scene. So they had to have life and animation and I had fun playing with all the different poses. Now this is just uh, what I would call the sweet spot of illustrating a book. I was, um, early on, I was just thinking, you know, what kind of squirrels or what kind of dishes would squirrels use? <laughs> I laughed and I posted this on my Instagram one day and I sent it to Christy and I just said, you know, I designed a line of dishes for squirrels. and. <laughs> So they found their way into the final scene, but I had so much fun with this. I like to think about all the little details and um, I really enjoy that. Um, more sketching. I was playing with different trees uh, for the book, especially in winter. Um, what would be the most interesting skeletons of trees uh, for the book? And on the left here, different uh, oak trees. I did a lot of research on oaks. I don't know if I needed to, but I did. Um, these were style and color tests, and again, none of these were working. I felt like they, I, I liked some of the textures, but I felt like they weren't right for the book. So I abandoned these early on, but I just thought I'd show, you know, as part of the process. And then these are nature studies. Um, 
I ended up painting a ton of, <clears throat> excuse me, leaves and flowers uh, for all the scenes in the book um, because the seasons do evolve in the book and it was important to sort of make sure that I had the right colors for every season and, and visual interest. So part two, just one moment. Oh, it's already up here. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I swear this is water. Okay. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm trying to, here we go. Wait, I went way ahead of myself here. Yes, I am jumping to this. Um, so these were some of the cover uh, designs. I knew right away I loved the central image of the squirrels in the tree hole. I, I knew right away that was the winner, but we went through quite a process. Hey, we're, we're still on, I don't know if you can hear me, but we're still on the page with the leaves and flowers. Are you really? Okay. Uh -huh. Well, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm glad you told me because we don't know who we're talking to. Um, Okay, just a second. Let me let me go back to. I'm gonna just stop the share and I'm gonna start again. See if this works. Okay, can everybody see? We we can see that. This, that was the beginning. Yep. Okay, can you see the? There you go. Yep. Okay. So this was one of the first designs I came up with and it definitely changed. But like I said, I, I knew that that tree hole was going to be the, the winner. It, it just had the most, um, it had the perfect uh, proportions. But I played with different variations. Um, I, I sort of like this one too. Uh, and then this one, it's it was just a wild card. Um, it was some of the scenery in the book and I it, I had a lighter hand with the um, typography. But we went through a lot of covers. So the colors kept changing, uh, the contrast kept changing, even the lettering. So um, this one on the bottom left is fairly close to the what we ended up with, but it was um, changed to blue. And then these are some of my favorite scenes in the book. Um, I really had the most fun with this between the dishes and just the cute animals having this great picnic on a tree stump. <laughs> it was just a fun scene. And uh, I really, I would say it's one of my favorites. Um, and this little guy on the left, uh, on the, I mean, sorry, on the right, looks so satisfied with his, <laughs> with his soup. So, um, and here's another scene. This was a little difficult to illustrate. It took me several attempts, but, um, you know, little Zeke has to cross this branch and it's very scary. The weather is terrible. It's raining, it's hailing. So I had to play with this several times and I really wanted that stream to be turbulent and I wanted the water to be really, you know, just in full motion. So it took me quite a bit to get this right. And um, I actually got a, a blossom and watercolor behind him. <laughs> Uh, which was good. I, I was actually happy with that. But um, sometimes with watercolor, you never know what you're going to get. And then um, this is the last scene I'll share. Um, this was another difficult one. I really played with lighting here. Um, you know, the family is, uh, you know, leaving their home and they have little squirrel suitcases. <laughs> So <laughs> I decided to give them hardback suitcases, kind of a retro feel. And uh, <laughs> even though I'm a fan of Longchamp, but uh, I gave them hardback. So uh, anyway, so that uh, the sea is a little calmer there, but I just, it was really fun to play with that, that full moon and, um, and have that forest sort of illuminated at night. And um and that's it. I'll stop the share and I'll go back to Marianne. Hi. Um, I, that was amazing. I have not seen any of that. I mean, oh, really? well, well, you know, it's interesting how, how the process works because, you know, slipping in as a writer and not an illustrator for the first time, I did the reverse. I was the illustrator for, um, uh, different authors 
<laughs> and I really knew there is a respect. Um, I had one bad experience where I had an author that literally uh, told me exactly what he wanted. And it was so smothering yeah. that it was, it was one of my least favorite projects. So I knew enough to say, she's a professional, just let her have freedom. And I sat back. So I did not, wasn't part of the editorial um, art directing end. And I got to see like surprise, surprise when the book was not out yet, but when the final uh, illustrations were submitted. And then I was just like, oh my God, this is fantastic. So, so that's how it goes, or that's how it went for us. Um, I don't know how you felt, but I just think as an illustrator, I know that you want to be left alone, you want to be creative, and I try to um, do that in my relationship uh, with Christine. So it really worked out really well, I think. I hope you agree. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I guess we're open for questions. Um, Gracie, I don't know if you want to get us all back on the screen. I don't know how this works. Um, yeah. and maybe tackle, no, I don't want to also cut. Christine, were, do, was there anything else you wanted to say? Oh, um, I don't think so. I mean, it, it, there's just so many steps in the book process. I probably skipped some things, but it's just a lot of uh, collaboration, a lot of back and forth. I send things to the editor. She shows the team, it comes back, you know, there's just so many, um, there's so many rounds of everything. So I kind of gave you a broad overview of, of what, um, what's done and the different stages. Um, and the cover process can take a while sometimes, but, but like I said, I knew that tree hole was gonna end up being the one, even though it changed a lot uh, within the design. But um, I guess the only other thing I can say is early on, I had all of these visual puns for the book, which I abandoned because again, it's a classic picture book and it just didn't fit. But when they were eating the acorn soup at the end, I had containers of um, organic non-GMO acorn broth. <laughs> and I just had all these little, these little funny things that I added in for the parents, but I, I left that out. And I think that was a good decision. Well, you did a great job. And um, um, so going back to the title, um, it was a million titles before it was The Belonging Tree. It actually started out being the way it should be. Yes, um, I remember that. At, at one of those, uh, that's what I think I submitted it as. Um, so for, the, for everyone out there, you know, there's committees for everything. And um, the publicity commi committee comes in and puts their two cents on when we're trying to find a title for a book. So, you know, it, it, it is a, a process because, you know, the title has to reflect the book and they want it to, you know, obviously be good and sell and all that. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, Gracie, maybe you can pop in again. Yeah, I'm back, back again. Um, so I have a few questions for you guys. Uh, Marianne, I'll start with this one. As you mentioned earlier, this is the first time you've collaborated with an illustrator. So how did that come about? Okay, that's a great question. So um, first of all, my life was sort of nuts at this moment. Um, when I sold the book in, I think it was 2017, late or early 18, um, I had three books under contract and I, I was in the process of moving. So life was just overwhelming. And when I mentioned it to Christy, my editor, she says, well, how do you feel about collaborating with an illustrator? And because she said, this book is timely, you know, we wanted to, you know, get out there. And, um, and at first I said, well, like, I've never done that before. Um, and I thought about it. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute, you know, my job is done, the manuscript's done. And I think this will be a great opportunity. Um, and then when they introduced me to um, Christine's art, I was like, okay, this, is, this feels right. But overall, when I look back at this experience, it really has changed me. Uh, first of all, I think we know that we have to change. Like right now, we, everything has changed. But it also made me have a different perspective. Um, it opened up my writing world. It um, 
it made me uh, be more creative and be opened up to topics that normally I wouldn't write about because they wouldn't fit my illustration style. A good example is I just sold my first uh, picture book biography uh, in which I submitted as author only because I felt I wasn't the right illustrator for this project. And, um, and I, I sold it and that's in 2022. But rest assured, I have two books that I illustrated coming out in 2021, uh, which are one's done and ready to go and that will be out in January and the other one comes out in the fall, which I'm working on now. So that is the backstory of that. And I, I think it's something I want to do more of. Um, I want to collaborate more with, with illustrators. So you never know, we could be, be doing another book together. Yay. Fantastic. Okay. Um, this is kind of related, but a question from Vivian. Your discussion raises a question in my mind. If you are only doing text or art, do you want to have a collaborative process with the other half of the team or do you prefer having the editor or someone as kind of the middle person to go back and forth? I, I think we sort of touched on that a bit. Um, sometimes I had wished I was more involved, but I so I've been in this business long enough to know that the, the illustrator has to do their thing. Um, I think like in the next book, I want to know, I'm sort of being, um, I'm able to pick the illustrator or be part of that committee to pick the illustrator. So that I really want to be part of because, um, but other than that, once that happens, I do illustration notes um, and provide some um, research background that I have, uh, but that's about it. And, and I think being in touch with the editor is a good in-between. How do you feel, Christine? I mean, I, I think a little collaboration works, but I remember years ago, I was offered a manuscript and the author was sort of high profile and there were so many uh, art notes that I felt like I would never be able to, <laughs> I didn't have any leeway creatively and I didn't feel comfortable with it and I passed. And um, I think you have to give leeway, but I also, as an illustrator, feel like I need to respect the tone and the... Um, I mean, I'm open to feedback, but I think in that initial little bubble of creativity, you need to run wild because if you, if you have too many art notes and too many things, it's, it's hard to, uh, to do what you do, you know? So it, it's sort of a, um, a delicate balance, I guess. Uh, it, but, 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 but that said, I totally agree. There's always, um, I think the author needs to, you know, we, we want to check things before it goes off to press, uh, just to make sure that our words um, are relayed correctly and there is no, nothing that went, you know, it goes through copy editors and art directors, but I think it's out of respect to the author that we see it before it goes to press, because I think there was a few tiny things, um, but I, and I want that for my next book, just because I've researched this person and I always want to, you know, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Because when I go, I, I don't want to get the book and say, oh no, you know, they forgot whatever. Um, but, but that, but I do think that, um, you know, separate is good. And then coming together a little bit to check things is perfectly fine. Fantastic. Here's a general question for both of you. Where did you study illustration or art? You want me to go first? Sure. <laughs> uh, I went to the, um, I'm from Massachusetts, originally the Boston area, and I went to the Massachusetts College of Art and Design a long time ago um, and studied illustration. And I, I was lucky enough to get into, I actually signed the first contract of my first book uh, which was written by Eileen Spinelli before I graduated. Uh, so I jumped into children's books uh, pretty young uh, at, at 22. And here I am now at 42. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been doing it a while. How about you? <laughs> I did not actually study illustration. I, um, after college, I went right into advertising and remained there for I don't know, 10 or 15 years. And um, 
I was an art director, but my favorite part of the job was always drawing, and I really was a frustrated illustrator. So uh, in 2003, I left the agency world, and I went out on my own and um, became an illustrator. It was a lot of work. Um, it was a lot of trial and error, but um, I eventually took a class at School of Visual Arts. Yay, Monica Wellington. <laughs> Got to give a little plug. Um, but, you know, met so many wonderful, some of my best friends I met at that school. And so it was a continuing ed class at night. I took it a few times to learn the process of picture books. I knew it was something I wanted to do. And I think just with anything in life, if you really want it and you constantly hone your craft and you work toward it, um, you know, you can do it. I actually didn't even study advertising, but that's another story. <laughs> But I just, I, uh, I, I always was an artist, you know, from a young age, and my parents could speak to that. Um, but just uh, illustration was something I always wanted to do. And I even remember being in high school and School of Visual Arts came to our school. And back then I was afraid of the big bad, you know, big bad city. That was New York in the 80s. So that's changed. <laughs> so... Um, this can be a question for both of you. What is your favorite medium to use when you illustrate? Kristen, why don't you go for us? Oh, okay. Well, I guess uh, lately it really is watercolor. Um, after this book, I, I so enjoyed the book and in, in illustrating and watercolor that I'm going to be, um, I have a book coming out next year uh, teaching uh, the process of illustrating and watercolor. So I really love that right now. I, I really also love just plain old soft lead pencil. I love to draw and um, my first book was um, drawn in pencil and colored digitally. So um, those are probably my two favorites. I love gouache too, but I think I like that for more uh, decorative work. Um. I am so all over the place. I think that's why like no one knows me after 60 books because I keep changing my style. Um, they tell me that's not true, but I don't know. Um, so gouache has been my go-to for a while, um, but suddenly I might as well, this, is, this isn't coming out till January, but um, like, I don't know if you can see it real close. It's a uh, pen and ink and watercolor, which is sort of new for me. Um, so I don't even know what I'm doing for the, the next book, I think it is also going to be pen and ink and watercolor. But um, I just like, I get bored really quickly doing the same thing. Uh, and you know, you're working on this 32 page book, which is 16 spreads. And by the time I'm done, it's like, okay, I, I wanna try something new. So I've done collage, I've done gouache, I've done acrylics. Um, so it, it really depends on the book too. I mean, if it's a book about the ocean, you're probably gonna use watercolor, uh, or me anyway. But um, so it depends on the book itself would maybe help choose that, um, that medium. But there you go. <laughs> Fantastic. And I have one final question that's um, a little more specific. Uh, Christine, did you have to recreate every one of those covers or was it digitized in some way? Oh, um, I did have all of the art on a layered file, so I was able to move elements around. So I didn't have to recreate it each time. It was a lot of, um, I did a lot of it in Photoshop. I work in layers in general in Photoshop. It allows me to make edits and uh, change lighting if I need to, like with the cover. Um, some of the leaves needed to be lightened up. So no, I did not have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> it was still a lot of work, but not as much as it could have been. <laughs> All righty. Well, I think that's all we have. Thank you both so much for coming oh, out and uh, reading to us. Um, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, I included the link to the print page in case you want a copy of the belonging tree. And as Marianne said, we'll have signed copies. Um, so just click on through and have a fantastic evening. All right. Thank, thank you everybody. for helping us celebrate. <laughs> all right. Good night, everyone. All right. Good night. Good night.